previously on Boonapt. Seems to be cut very different than the other two, which makes me think that either a different person did it. I believe Cucamelon was the victim of the snuggeting, and uh, it's still unsolved to this day. This is uh, a hair that is consistent with human head hair. Can you tell us what was going through your mind when you realized that you were now on the receiving end of a boonapping? Months of rehabilitation at the uh, boonapping center in Needham, Massachusetts. One Point Perspective, in association with Walpole High Film Festival, presents Boonapped 2, Llama Drama. I'm Mr. Allen. And I'm Mr. Conley, and we're your hosts. So for those who need to be brought up to speed on the case, a few weeks back, Lola the Llama was boonapped from the Pomelo crew, and there were letters sent to them from a person identifying themselves as the Joker, taunting the crew, and since then there have actually been five letters sent Uh, All these letters are available on our website, under the podcast page, under the Boonapt uh, tab. So if you're interested in seeing what these letters say and look like, please go there uh, to check them out. Uh, Since our last episode, Marcel, the Beanie Boo for the Mango Crew, has also been Boonapt. And the Joker claims to have done this one as well. So, so far, for those paying attention at home, we have Lola the Llama, the tie-dye llama about two inches tall, has been boonapped from the Pomelo crew, and Marcel, who is a dog with black and white fur, about two inches tall as well, uh, Marcel has also been boonapped, Uh, and that's from the Mango crew. And since then, we have gotten emails uh, about possible theories and tips, and we're going to delve into those today. Our first anonymous tip comes from an eyewitness, actually. Strangely enough, this anonymous tip actually came from a Walpole High School and Walpole Film Festival alumni. They referred to him as Red Kelly. And he's here with us in studio today. Now, Red, what were you doing out in the woods? And I believe this was at uh, 4.30 in the morning? Yes, it was. So I was actually out in the wood uh, scouting for seagulls uh, to get with my slingshot. Um, They are uh, nutritious and they are delicious. So I was uh, scouting for some seagulls. So you're an avid hunter, obviously. Yes. You know those woods well. Uh, Whereabouts in in the woods did this take place? I was actually wading through the water right underneath Whitebridge at the time, um, scouting the shoreline. I was about uh, waist deep and... uh, yeah, it was very cold, very cold. Okay, and can you describe what you what you saw? So I, well, looking for seagulls, um, was uh, noticing some uh, movement on the bank. There was uh, some thickets moving and things. Um, and I thought it was strange because uh, there are no leaves on the trees, but um, there were some very bright colors coming out of the bushes, and um, they would almost appeared tie-dye. Um, which was unsettling to me, to say the least, because it wasn't foliage season, and everything's pretty dismal and gray right now. So you you had some sort of binoculars, and you saw a flash of of tie-dye? No, just my eyes. So we should remind people that Lola is a tie-dye llama. Now, could you make out, was this a small object? It was very small. I just have very good eyesight. Uh Uh-huh. About two to three inches in height? That would match up with what I saw. Can you give us any other clues as to the who was handling Lola or, or this object? Uh, no, but it did appear, um, from my point of view, that it was um, in some sort of distress and being dragged. That's all I know, because I then went to the location where I saw it, and there was drag marks on the ground. Very unsettling things to see in the town forest. Did you call the police? Um, I did not call the police um, because uh, when I got in the water, my uh, T-Mobile razor was in my pocket and became water damaged. We received a flurry of text messages at about 2.30 in the morning from one of the film festival's own Mr. David St. Martin. And so we got this uh, text message saying that he thinks he's solved the case. 
Uh, naturally, we were asleep, so we didn't answer him at the moment. But when we did wake up, uh, we figured it would probably make sense to have him in to explain his theory. Uh, so we invited him to our studio, and we have him in the studio with us here today uh, to talk about his theory that he found in the letters. We received two notes, one addressed to Pomelo and another addressed to the film class as a whole. These notes have been posted on the website. However, let me read to our listeners out there because the film one reads as follows. I have decided to take another boo. Can you stop me? Question mark. There is a clue in this note. Signed, The Joker, and it has the Joker from the TV series, a picture of his face, inside a round purple circle. Now, we were utterly baffled by this note. It wasn't until the mathematical genius, Mr. St. Martin, came in with his protractor and cracked this code. Uh, actually, it was, I just used like letters and stuff. It, it wasn't math. Yeah, so can you explain the algorithm behind the code cracking that you did for this letter? What kind of high math did you do? Well, first off, are we talking T4 calculator, T5? What, what, what T number did you use? I brought down the TI-84, uh, but then realized that there was just a bunch of letters and that math wasn't uh, required. And so I just used basic uh, English that I would learned in high school. You know, basically, the co- it says there is a clue in this note. I listen to podcasts. I've watched a lot of documentaries. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of considered an outside expert just because of, the, of those things that I do. Um, and I realized, well, if the clue is inside of it, let's take a look at it. And so the only crew's name that was spelled inside of this uh, letter was Cucamelon. So you're saying that the let, the, the letter, all the letters for Cucamelon are inside the note? Correct. But it's not in order. Let me stress that, right? Correct. I don't think the, the crew might have been that witty to put it in order. I just think that they wanted to just put all the letters inside of the note. And it's the only one that, that is spelled. Impressive. So, I mean, we had Mr. St. Martin on last in our last case, and he helped us out with lawn and yard care. And now he can read too. What is it that you can't do? I'm a horrible singer. So if there was anything that had to do with song and it had me to sing about clues, I couldn't do that. But you know, the basic stuff like reading, uh, yard work, uh, mulch, uh, I'm, I'm, I can do that. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. What would you do if you came home to your windows shattered, your house ransacked, and your Beanie Boos gone? It's not something we like to think about, but every year handfuls of Beanie Boos are stolen by boo burglars. And every year, shockingly little is done by police and the FBI to recover these precious critters. Hello, I'm Skip Christmas, inventor of the Invisiboo Beanie Boo Secure Storage Unit. For the price of only two first-class tickets to Buenos Aires, you can protect your beloved boos with the most innovative stuffed animal safe on the market. My Invisiboo safes are designed to accurately resemble random objects in your home, leaving those filthy thieves absolutely boo-fuddled when they start searching for your tiny friends. Your boos will be out of sight, but not out of mind. Current models of the Invisiboo Beanie Boo Secure Storage Unit accurately mimic such common household objects as an expired gallon of milk, a vintage Hammond organ, a honey-baked ham, a life-size bronze statue of Ghostbuster star Ernie Hudson, an old set of Jenga that's probably missing a few pieces, and the Holy Crown of Hungary. The Invisiboo Beanie Boo Secure Storage Unit, because your boo-loved boos deserve the boost. Use promo code NAP to receive 20% off.
again, there have been uh, plenty of tips and, and leads, and we followed all of them. Uh, some of them have led to dead ends. Some of them have led to uh, just more questions. But one thing that we keep leading back to are these letters, uh, especially the ones that are saying, hey, there's a clue in the letter. So we called our forensic art expert, Miss Kate Engels, back to run some of these theories by her. Uh, we should note one more time that each are signed by the Joker, but there are three different Jokers, uh, one from Adam West, one from the Tim Burton version starring Jack Nicholson as the Joker, and the other one is from what looks to be uh, a comic book. One thing that I would also like to point out about these letters is that the the writer of these letters or the assembler of these letters did sign them. He, there is handwriting, so we will definitely have to be sending these to our lab for a handwriting analysis. I also want to note they were signed in colored pencil, um, and they were signed in pink, even on the red paper. So it's definitely not an art student is what you're telling us. I would sure hope not. All right, so Ms. Engels, we, we do want to throw a few theories by you. Um, so there have been some of our uh, concerned students have reached out saying who they think is behind these letters. And the first theory is the Mr. St. Martin theory. And I know that a lot of people are saying, why would a, a grown man involve himself in something that's so seemingly childish as a boo napping? The main basis behind this theory is something that you actually just said. You were saying that someone wrote in a pink colored pencil on red paper. Now, we know for a fact that Mr. St. Martin is, uh, is colorblind. And that seems like something that someone who is colorblind might not realize they are doing because it does not work. It's that's, very hard to read. That's correct. Is that theory possible? I think that is quite a possible theory. I also want to add that on that red uh, paper with the pink writing, the hair is cut off of the Joker. And last I checked, Mr. St. Martin is bald. And all of these Jokers are from before any of these kids were born. What are your thoughts, Mr. Allen? Well, you know, I, I've been struggling with this St. Martin theory for some time because we've asked him and he's denied it. So, and then the second letter, there was a clue buried on the top left corner of the second note under the M and the E, and that was a piece of hair. And that we sent along to the lab for analysis. And I ask you, would Mr. St. Martin lose hair over this letter when there's no hair to lose? He has been known to wear wigs in the past, as seen in Driver's Ed. But I think we, ha we have to, we have to uh, rule him out based on that. I, I believe him, and, and, and that evidence alone, I think, rules him out. But maybe not. With more and more theories piling in every day into our inboxes and emails and phones, we figured the best way to get to the bottom of this serial boonapping is to look back on a cold case from 10 years ago. In order to better know the mind of this boonapper, we reached out to Ruby Heckler and asked for his advice, hunting this madman down. next time on Boonapped. Ruby Heckler, we are so thrilled to have you here. There is a science field that can analyze the way in which people make their letters and the intent behind the way it was written, the emotion. You get addicted to the madness, you get addicted to watching other people uh, go mad.